everyone. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to recreate the zombie look. And obviously, I'm not wearing it. I did it on this beautiful specimen's face. His name is Matt. He's my boyfriend. And he let me put makeup on his face for once. So yay, thumbs up. I mean, what girlfriend does not want to put makeup on their boyfriend's face? I mean, you tell me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Even though, no, if you're dating me, I'm like, oh, let's put makeup on your face. I'm hoping what you guys get out of this tutorial is inspiration for your costumes or you learn new techniques. I'm not a professional. I want to stress that because sometimes people could be like, you can, you should have used this or you should have did that. And it's like, I, I'm learning just like you guys. I'm self-taught. So I really hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you will be notified when I upload new videos. Also follow me on my Instagram where I upload lots and lots of pictures. I'm um, known as I wanted to see one video on there too. And let me know if you guys can guess what my next tutorial is gonna be leave it in the comments below so yeah I will see you guys next time and now let's begin the tutorial to start the look off you want to use gelatin to create spots that look like your skin is melting or scarred you can buy cosmetic gelatin to do this or you can create your own by just using regular gelatin you get at the grocery store for every teaspoon of gelatin you want to add one teaspoon of hot water and one fourth of a teaspoon of glycerin the glycerin will help prevent the gelatin from hardening quickly. The gelatin will end up hardening eventually, so when it does, stick it in the microwave for about 3 to 6 seconds. You don't want it to boil, because if it boils, the gelatin's consistency messes up. Make sure the gelatin isn't too hot before applying it to the skin, otherwise you will burn yourself. The great thing about gelatin is it comes out real easily with warm or hot water. So you can get it in your hair, eyebrows, if you got a beard like Matt, you can get it on there too, and it won't end up yanking out your hair. It just melts right off with warm water like I said. Gelatin does stink, so if you want to add some vanilla extract or some type of scent, go ahead. It stinks when you're putting it um, on, but the smell eventually goes away. To blend the gelatin into your skin, dip your finger into warm water and then just blend the edges out. So this part was done before I applied the gelatin to the side of Matt's face, but I wanted to explain it. I bought a fake brain for $1 at Dollar Tree. I cut the brain up and placed it over the gelatin I applied to the top of Matt's head. Once I had it placed where I wanted it, I added gelatin around the edges of the brain to help it appear more realistic rather than a piece of rubber just sitting on the top of his head. And then I um, also wanted it to help the brain stay in place. Next, I apply liquid latex onto the edges of the gelatin that aren't near any hair. This will help the gelatin adhere longer to the skin, as well as help it blend in more nicely with your real skin. Liquid latex is a pain in the butt to remove from your hair. Lots of times it just gets stuck in your hair and you end up yanking a lot of those pieces out. That's why I try to avoid applying liquid latex to these areas. Once I was done with that, I applied random layers of latex around the skin. This will hold the one ply toilet paper I will be applying to these areas to create open wounds. Just cut a piece of toilet paper to fit the area you will be applying it to and place it right over the latex. Once you've got that piece of paper on, cut the center of it open and then apply liquid latex over the edges of the paper. I applied a fake mouse that I cut in half onto Matt's skin using spirit gum. You want to apply the spirit gum to the area you will be applying the fake mouse and then also to the back of the fake mouse. Spirit gum is like super glue for the face so you want to make sure you have a spirit gum remover before applying any spirit gum to your face because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stick on you, okay? And you want to make sure you buy rubber mice for this because they adhere better to the skin because they don't weigh as much. So don't use any plastic mice because they're going to keep falling off. And once I've got my mouse on, I use liquid latex to blend the mouse in with the skin. This would um, help the mouse look like it's popping out of the skin, and it's also going to help the mouse last longer, like adhere better to the skin. Now on to painting the wound. I'm using Mayron's Pro Coloring Palette and Bruise to paint random areas of the gelatin and inside the wounds I made with toilet paper red. Use a regular red face paint as your face color. I look for areas in the gelatin that look like holes to create bloody wounds in the gelatin. And then I apply a darker red to the outer edges of the wound. This will add dimension to the look, helping it look more realistic. So you always want the lightest color you're going to be using in the wound to be the base color and then a darker color on the edges to give it dimension.
Help the gelatin blend in with the skin. Use a matte foundation that is lighter than your natural skin tone. The lighter foundation will help you look pale and matte foundations contain no shimmer. I don't imagine zombies sparkling so that's why you want to wear a matte foundation. I simple the foundation on using a paintbrush that way it's uneven and splotchy looking which is really helpful for a zombie look. Once I've got the foundation on, I use a little stipple sponge with latex on it to give a bubbly, uneven texture to the skin. And then I apply light green face paint randomly to different parts. You want your skin to look like it's decaying, so the matte foundation, latex, and green face paint all helps achieve this. Now into the open wounds, I apply a mix between a thick and liquid blood, which means it's not as liquidy as a liquid blood, but not as thick as a thick blood. The one I'm using is from Bloody Mary Cosmetics. It comes with a small brush applicator, which is perfect for getting the smaller wounds. I ended up applying the blood to the side of Matt's nose and lips before I decided I wanted it to look like his skin was ripped in this area. So if you want to do a more simple, less gory zombie, you can go with this option. After I've got that blood on, I apply a thick blood randomly around the wounds and skin. Thick blood doesn't budge like the liquid blood does. It stays in place and looks more realistic. To the brain, I applied the thick blood because it helps the brain look like a real brain. Thick blood is my favorite type of fake blood. The thing with liquid blood is after a while when it dries up it looks like fruit punch. So I think it's nice to have a mixture of thick blood and liquid blood. You don't want your zombie looking like a well rested zombie. So with my death wheel from Ben I, I apply the burgundy face paint directly below the lash line. And then I apply a light bluish gray face paint under the burgundy face paint, blending it down toward the bags of the eye and onto the eyelid. I also apply a little bit of that gray face paint randomly around the skin. It sucks the color out of your skin, which helps with the whole death appearance. It's time to pour liquid blood all over yourself so you can pour it wherever you want. Make sure you get it on your clothes and make sure you're not wearing anything that's special. I just poured it on Matt's brain, randomly around the skin, and especially on his neck going onto his clothes. I made my liquid blood using food coloring and this black blood I had. It's really inexpensive, it's just that I didn't have any and we did this at night time so it's not like I could go anywhere and buy some. Once I was done applying most of the makeup, I decided I wanted the zombie to look more gory. So I just made it look like Matt had a ripped open mouth. So basically you're making a little wound into a bigger wound. So use the gelatin, red face paints, and fake blood to achieve this. I also used a thin pink brush to draw on little veins. I used the bluish gray and burgundy face paints to draw on the veins. So that is it. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you will be notified when I upload a new Halloween video. So yeah, I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.